Hey, I'm Bill Kennedy, and this is our third video in these in this series. I hope you've watched the first two where we explained a little bit more about vector databases and even how to use a llama to run an embedding model. Um, this time, I want to show you something that I think is really cool. It's not anything we'd use in production, but it gives you a little bit more sort of sense, maybe behind the scenes, how some of these models um, can be trained to be very specific for the things that that you need. We're going to use a really simple model that Google provided called um, Word to Vec. Okay, and it's something that we can run locally in code. But what we're going to do is download some data. We're going to chunk that data up. We're going to give it to the model to learn from, and then we're going to ask the model. Um, we'll do that whole similarity stuff again, but based on the content that's in this particular document. So it'll be tailored and specific to. Um, this content and give you another sort of general idea of how how these things work. Now, the word to vec model, um, you could go and and sort of download this model. It's at github.com fog fish word to vec here. Okay, um, let's just bring that up here for a second. So it's right here and it's really a C plus plus um, sort of port of the library. So we're going to use Go, we're going to use C Go to sort of play with this thing here. In fact, um, there are instructions for building it out, but what I did for us, and if you trust me, um, great, is I've added a Word to Vec package, okay, with the code already in it, with all the C Go bindings, and I've already built the um, dynamic library. Now, if you don't trust me with the dynamic library that I built, then you could go ahead and follow these instructions here, and it will rebuild it from the same source that I took off of that sort of website. I just put everything here together, so you wouldn't have to go and do anything to run this example. Um, Again, if you don't trust that I did anything to this code, you can always go up to word to vec frog shit, um, build this library on your own, and then leverage it. You'll see here that um, you'll need to specify to Seago where that library is, header files and things like that. So assuming that you trust me, because I'm not looking to hurt anybody, um, we have the ability now to run the word to vec model um, we've got the APIs provided to us through this package. Okay, now the idea is that I'm going to download this um, cell phone and accessory reviews from um, Amazon here. So um, all we've got to do is sort of curl that and we'll be good. So let's start there. We need the data. So in the um, make file, in the make file, I have this download data command. And what it will do is download this raw data, review cell phone and accessory GZ, and put it in um, Zarf data example three. So let me run that first. Make download data. It's a really big file, so I don't want to save it with the repo. But as it's downloading, it will open up a little bit of it, and you'll sort of see. So the idea is that we're going to have this custom data file. Let's pretend that this is our company, and we've got these sort of reviews about cell phones and accessories, and we want to do some work with it. So I've now downloaded it, and you can see here, there's the data right there, okay? And there's a lot of it. In fact, if we look at how big it is, what is that under Zarf L, Zarf data, um, and I got the example three, even JSON, it's, it's fairly large, right? 135 meg, I don't want to save that with the repo. Okay, but here's all of this sort of custom data that I just downloaded. We can imagine that this is data related to us. So the name of the reviewer, information about helpful, the review text, Sort of things like that. Okay. So I've downloaded the data. So we're going to have to do um, a couple things here. Okay. It's going to be a three step process. 
First thing we're going to do is clean the data. Then we're going to train our model on this data. And then we're going to play with it and see, see what happens. So the cleaning process, the idea here is we want to take this data and break it into the different words um, that are important to us. Remember, this is a word to vec, the idea of taking words and vectorizing them. So we want to do that. We'll, we'll, pro we'll, we'll take all of that, um, the response here, right? So what's important to us is that review text. Sorry, review, review text. So let's go in here. So we're going to open up the JSON document. I'm going to create a new file called example three words. And what we're going to do is we're going to scan one line at a time. So this scanner by default uses a line scanner. So we'll read one line at a time. We'll marshal that data into our document. Our document right now is this. We just care about the review text. Um, then what we'll do is I have this package that I'm also providing called stop words. Stop words are sort of words that really don't um, add any value to our life. So you can see here I've hard coded a list of stop words. Um, and so if we see these particular words, um, we're going to get rid of them out of the out of the content because they don't, they're not going to necessarily um, help us. So you can see I've taken this from um, B ballot the uh, stop words. Again, I've got everything in here just so it's a lot easier for us to work with. But giving credit to that repo. So we'll we'll get rid of the stop words. And then what we'll do is um, write the new content to our output file, which is our example three words. So why don't we run that first? We'll do that first. So let me do this. I'll comment out those two things. And what we'll do first is just the clean. Okay. So I'll run, make example three. Now to get this fancy thing to stay on one line. So you can see here, we went through 190, 194,000 plus lines of content. Um, just some funny little print things that reset sort of markers and stuff. But now that we've done that, we now have this words document. So these are the words from each review um, minus the stop words that we're going to use to um, train our model on related to all of the sort of reviews that we got. So you can see here we've broken that up into, into these individual words. Okay, perfect. All right, now that we've done that, um, what we can do is train our model. So now what we're going to do is use the word to vec. So word to vec has this config. It's a fairly large config that we have to give it. So we've got to give it the corpus. It's like a fancy word of saying our input document. So that's example three words. Um, we give it a tokenizer so it knows how to tokenize these different words. In our case, you know, that empty space should be good. We've got a sequencer. Um, the sequencer represents the end of a sentence. Okay. And our carriage return line feed will, will represent that. Then you've got the config word vector. So, um, we're representing a um, number of data points in the vector up to 300. We're, we're all under that. You've got a window size, um, thresholds, frequency. All right. You can hover over these if you're following along with the code. Um, then there's a, a learning part of it. Um, which talks about epic, uh, epic and rate. And then there's a bunch of other stuff here. So um, in our case here, what we're doing now is a really basic sort of configuration with our word model. And what we're asking um, the system to do is create a model file, which will be the final output. All right. So this is something you can go back and sort of play with these um, settings, but these are tend to be the default settings. Um, that I read about as we went. Okay, let's do the model training now. And this is using our, you know, C++ library um, with the model. So doing the training on the words that we've given it. Okay, cool, it's done. And now what we have is this sort of model file. And you can see here that it's 
not like anything we can read, okay? But this is a word to vec model file. Okay, great. So now what we've done is we have a model. We just produced it using our word to vec C++ package. We built this model based on the content from our example words. We've got that. So now the next step is we can actually start playing with the model. So what we'll do is we'll use word to vec to load that model that we just loaded up. Um, the 300 represents um, the vector size. We're using 300 data points. That's what I said here. Again, um, these were default values that I got from the comments, like example use 300, example use 5. Okay, so nothing that I've come up with other than the code that we're using, giving um, examples of what we should be sort of using, okay? So I've used all of the sort of defaults that have been provided. So how do we test it? We're going to load the model, and now we're going to, we're going to have some fun here. So what we're going to do is the API has this um, function called lookup. It says look up nearest words from the model. So I'm going to start with the idea of the word bad. And then I'm going to say in this, I'm going to say, give me the top, the nearest 10 words that are close to bad in the review. And so we should be able to see that. And then what I'm going to do is come up with some other words. So terrible, horrible, price, battery, great, and nice. Those are a set of words. What we're going to do is there's this uh, vector function that will let us do a vector. So what we'll do is we'll take each word. Um, it looks like I'm doing word one and word two. So take these two words, use our word to vec package to vectorize those words. The vector that we get back also is very, very relevant to the data that we trained the model on. And then we'll use our traditional cosine similarity function to see how the model um, is treating these sort of words in terms of uh, similarity. So we'll, we'll compare those two. We'll compare price and battery. We'll compare sort of great and nice. I would like to see that these words are similar. These words are similar. I'd like to see that these two words are not similar, right? And then we'll see, see how that sort of goes. So let's go and run this now. We'll run it again. And let's see what we got here. So Give me the top 10 words similar to bad. And so horrible at 66%, terrible, poor, mediocre. What's really interesting here is that um, the model is doing this based on the data that we fed it, right? The model's doing this based on our specific um, situation. That's what's kind of cool about this. And I feel like this is pretty good. Terrible and horrible, 62% similarity. Price and battery is negative. Um, great and nice, you know, so that might be something where we're like, you know what, um, we want to improve that, right? We, let's, let's train the model more so we can get some better similarity between great and nice. And this is what a data scientist would start to sort of do here, right? They'd start to train the model uh, more and more and more. So based on what that data scientist knows to be true, we'll get some sort of better, better um, accuracy. And so I kind of like playing with this particular example only because it will give you an opportunity to start to train your own model in a very local way. And you can get a general sense of what the data scientists are doing with, with some of those um, bigger models. But you can start to train it sort of with your own data. And I don't think it's anything I do production wise. But as an example of being able to sort of train your own model with your own content and watching it be able to sort of vectorize those words and find similarity, I think it's, I think it's pretty cool. Okay. So with that done, the next thing is, you know, we really want to, um, I've been using the cosine search algorithm locally. But if we really want to do this at a production level, what we really want is a vector database to take these embeddings and to leverage it because we're going to have hopefully thousands of data points in our embedded space that we want the similarity. We want to be able to do that very, very fast and efficiently. So in the next video, I'll show you how we can leverage a vector database 
um, to give us that similarity report instead of our own little sort of simple um, cosine similarity function.